Hello, I'm Rod Dreer, writer, journalist, and Orthodox Christian, and welcome to a series of conversations with Metropolitan Hilarion Alfeyev about Orthodox life and faith. Vladika, we will begin today with a discussion of your six-volume uh, study of the life of Jesus. Maybe we can start by asking, why did you write a six-volume series of books about Jesus? After all, the world is full of books about Jesus. The initial source of inspiration for me was the book by uh, Pope Benedict XVI, Jesus of Nazareth. I read this book, I liked it very much. I thought it was quite uh, a courageous uh, step for uh, the Pope, and he was not yet uh, Pope Emeritus, he was an uh, acting Pope. It was uh, quite courageous for him to write a book on Jesus Christ, because so many books have been written. But then I thought, uh, why shouldn't I write my own book on Jesus Christ? Because after all, there are not many Orthodox books about Jesus Christ. As I started to write it, I was thinking that it would be one book, something similar to uh, the book by Pope Benedict, but from an Orthodox perspective. As I started to read the scholarly literature about uh, Jesus Christ and his life and teaching, I soon realized that the volume of my study will far exceed uh, one book. So I ended up with uh, six volumes on Jesus Christ. Well, you grew up in the atheist Soviet Union. How did you come to know about Jesus and to believe in him? My mother became an Orthodox Christian when she turned 38, and I was baptized uh, at the age of 12. And uh, from that time on, I started to go to church. I started to read uh, the available religious literature because uh, religious literature in general was forbidden in the Soviet Union. So uh, we used the so-called Sam is that, which mm. means uh, the uh, books which were uh, either brought illegally from the West or uh, photocopied from uh, pre-revolutionary editions, and uh, some of them were even typewritten. So there were typewriters, there were these books. My mother even copied some of the uh, books by hand, for example, uh, some studies by Nikolai Berdyaev, which uh, one could also not find in the Soviet Union. And I remember I was studying in a music school and uh, we had the subject which was called the musical literature. And the teacher explained to us uh, the St. Matthew Passion by J.S. Bach. And she had to tell us uh, the story of Jesus Christ because it is the subject of the composition. But she had uh, the only source which was available uh, to her, and it was the uh, novel by Mikhail Bulgakov, Master and Margarita, in which there are uh, there is a chapter dedicated to uh, Jesus Christ. So her version, which she presented to us, was taken not from the Gospel, which was not available, but uh, from this book by Mikhail Bulgakov. Did you know the true story at that point? At about... that point, I knew the true story, but uh, of course I could not intervene. I could not say that, you know, I read the gospel because it was uh, all done in secret. Now, in the Soviet Union, Jesus must have seemed like a real radical to young uh, Hilary Nalfeyev. No, he didn't uh, seem to be radical. I think... Uh, when I read the Gospel for the first time, I was uh, mostly fascinated uh, by the fact that uh, Jesus Christ was uh, both human and uh, divine. And in fact, uh, it is this uh, mystery of his uh, divinity and humanity and how his two uh, natures correspond to one another, which is the true secret of his personality. That's interesting. Now, do you think that there's anything about having grown up in an atheist society that gives you special insight today in presenting Christ to the West? 
Yes, because for many people in the West, Jesus Christ is uh, someone or something which is too familiar. And uh, there is no sense of miracle about him. There is no sense of wonder. Uh, people do not expect anything uh, new from him. It is, uh, for many, it seems uh, an old story, uh, which has been retold uh, hundreds of times, and they don't expect anything in particular from Jesus Christ. We, uh, who grew up in an atheist society, where, uh, as I said, even religious literature was forbidden, uh, we didn't have access to Jesus Christ directly. And many people had to learn about religion from anti-religious literature and to learn about uh, Jesus Christ uh, from uh, some anti-religious uh, books. Now, you've spent a lot of your career in ministry in the West, in Western Europe, and visiting the United States. What is your impression about the things that we Christians in the West and non-Christians miss about the life of Jesus? because of that familiarity? Uh, there are too many Jesuses which mm -hmm. exist in the West, both in uh, literature and in human imagination. And it is uh, very often the case that people create a Jesus of their own, the one which suits uh, their needs, their aspirations, uh, their sympathies and antipathies. And uh, the question is always, where is the real Jesus? And I think uh, the Orthodox Church can give some insights into the real Jesus. I emphasize in my book that uh, no church community should privatize Jesus. Uh, Jesus is much larger than the church, than a church. And uh, no church can claim that uh, it is only it that knows the real Jesus. But still, in the Orthodox tradition, we are very attentive to these both sides of uh, his ministry and of his personality, the human and the divine. And as we read the Gospels, we uh, always um, think how it is possible for one human being to be both divine and human at the same time. You know, I've been an Orthodox Christian for 17 years, and one of the things I appreciate most about the Orthodox approach to Jesus is that uh, it makes a distinction between knowing about Jesus and knowing Jesus himself. I think that's something that a lot of people, especially intellectuals, religious intellectuals, often forget these days. In the Orthodox Church, we believe in the real presence of Christ, not only in the consecrated uh, holy gifts, but also in the life of the Church in general. And we consider the Church as uh, His community. When we come to the Divine Liturgy, we uh, experience His living presence. It's not uh, some sort of commemoration of the um, Last Supper, Indeed, it is a commemoration, but not only a commemoration. And uh, it is not only a symbolic act to um, recreate the Last Supper. It is the Last Supper which continues from that time on and in which we participate. And uh, it is not by chance that in the liturgical texts of the Orthodox Church, we hear all the time that uh, Jesus is present with us, that angels are present when we celebrate the Divine Liturgy, that the Apostles are present. And we experience our church life as the continuation of uh, the life of the apostolic community, which started at that time and continues in our times. Last question. You are uh, a priest, a metropolitan, Working for Christ, serving Christ in this capacity uh, is your life. How do you keep your awareness of Jesus fresh in your own mind? How do you encounter him in a new way, in a living way? There are many different ways in which I encounter Jesus. First of all, through the liturgy. 
because the liturgy is uh, the point where we meet him personally. And every uh, liturgical text which is uh, read, which is sung during the liturgy, points to his real presence. Then, of course, we encounter him in prayer. Then uh, we encounter him when we read about him. And for me, uh, this exercise, which took me about five years to write these uh, six volumes on Jesus Christ, was uh, the time when I followed him uh, every day. I was with him on the Mount of Olives. I was with him in Galilee, in Samaria, in Judea, uh, on the Mount of Tabor. Uh, at his transfiguration, I was with him when he was crucified, and it was for me a fascinating journey. I must say that when I wrote this book, I didn't have any specific uh, readership or audience in my mind. I actually wrote it for myself, because I wanted to make clear for myself who was Jesus, uh, how these uh, two natures uh, coexisted in him and uh, what is his meaning for me personally and for my generation. Fadika, thank you very much. Next time we'll be talking about is the West post-Christian and also how do we know that Jesus existed and can we trust the authority of the witnesses who saw him?